What's good, YouTube? This your boy Chi World back at y'all again with another video. Today we doing a reaction video and not just a regular reaction video, a scary reaction video. Whoa, uh -huh. Today we will be reacting to a channel that go by the name of Onesie Entertainment. They got a lot of dope content and I will have the link to that page in the bio below if you want to check it out without me. The name of the video we watching out that channel today will be called Five True Horror Stories. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. There you go. Right. The go. story I am telling you now is something that happened to me seven years ago when I was in college. At that time, I had a best friend named Charles. Charles right, dreamed of being an exorcist and always said that he wanted to exorcise evil spirits with his own hands. Since he wanted to practice, he would often use a Ouija board to summon evil spirits. One oh, day, yeah, he told different. me that he needed help exorcising evil spirits and asked me to use the Ouija board with him. Since I didn't believe in such things, well, look how bad it looking. No, I just my, went to Charles' boy. house without thinking much he about it. Sneaky, I though. couldn't have imagined the consequences that choice would bring. At midnight, we lit candles and started using the Ouija board. But that's when the event I will never forget occurred. Charles called out, Devil! Evil spirit! Come here! Then Charles asked yeah, if anyone tripping. was present in the room, and the pointer moved. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Y'all ain't peeped that. But he got a nail painted, man. You know he on some gothic type stuff, man. You feel me? To yes. When Charles asked, what is your name? The pointer moved to Moloch. Charles muttered to himself. Okay, Moloch. Show us your physical form. What do you look like? After this, the pointer didn't move, and the room was still and silent. Then he Charles shouted, Show us your terrifying face! But at that moment, suddenly a pair of eyes appeared on Charles' forehead. I screamed in surprise. What? I thought I was hallucinating. Charles looked over at me, not knowing what was going on, and the eyes on his forehead, which looked like snake eyes, moved around very strangely. When I pointed to Charles' forehead and shouted, Your forehead! Charles touched his forehead and screamed, Ah! What is this? Then a small mouth appeared on his forehead, and the mouth spoke in a strange voice. Look in the mirror, Charles! <laughs> and then deep red blood flowed out of the mouth and covered Charles' face. Charles yeah. ran into the hallway, howling, and I followed him. Charles screamed and went into the bathroom, turned on the shower, and a- Hey, Charles would have ran in the bathroom, and I would have ran my ass home, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, you know what I'm saying? I would have got out of there. Real talk. I would have left his ass. Moment later, came out of the bathroom soaking wet. Some of the blood remained smeared on his face. Giving him a faint well, red water gonna do to Charles him, stood there with a blank expression. The eyes and mouth were gone from his forehead. Charles and I couldn't say anything. What the hell happened? Charles' body was shaking. Then Charles ran back into the room and shouted, I know how to exercise! I'll send these evil spirits to heaven! Charles picked up a book and opened it. The title of the book seemed to be about exorcism. But at that moment, I saw it. Something crawled out from the corners of the dark room. Oh, hey, they were nah. people the size of small dwarves. Their bodies were black. Yeah, with see though? That's why you gotta leave that spiritual stuff alone, bro. Oh, playing with the Ouija boards and all that, but leave that stuff alone. You're gonna open the world you don't wanna be a part of. If you Red bumps sticking out of their backs and long tails. They were crawling on all fours toward Charles. I thought I was hallucinating once again, but Charles was seeing them too. I saw his fearful expression and the tears in his eyes. The black dwarves crawled towards Charles and began to they gnaw at his legs. Charles. Blood flowed from his legs as he screamed in pain. I shouted to Charles in a trembling voice, asking what hey, to do, and he managed on, to look at the book he was holding and began to recite a spell. However, he could not- Look, he tripping, he tripping, look. What? 
you picking up some more witchcraft books. Nigga, you better grab that holy Bible, boy. Holding ...and began to recite a spell. However, he could not read properly because of the pain and just continued to scream. Then I saw numerous black blisters forming on Charles' legs, and I Ew. saw black liquid bursting out of them. The dwarves Ew. were crawling up Charles' body, gnawing at every part of him. Charles' eyes rolled back, and he screamed so much that he lost conssciousness. I thought that his parents would come to the room because Charles was screaming Man, so them. loudly. But for some reason, no one came to the room. After about five minutes, Charles' whole body was covered with thousands of black blisters and, and black liquid covered his body. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, and I didn't know what to do. Eventually, the black dwarves crawled back into the corner and disappeared. I stood there, blankly, unable to do anything. Tears flowed yeah. from my eyes like crazy, and when I looked at the clock, it was 3 a.m. I called the police, and the police and Charles's parents were shocked when they saw Charles' body. They rushed Charles to the hospital. They asked me what the hell had happened, but no matter how much I told them, they never believed me. It was natural that they couldn't believe it. If it were me, I wouldn't have believed it either. Charles received emergency surgery and fortunately did not die. But it took three months for his body to recover to its original Charles state. Leaking. The doctor oh. said she had no idea what caused Moto. Charles's body to suddenly become blistered like that. Ever since that night, Charles has not used the Ouija board again, and he's also given up on See, his dreams hey, of- that should be a lesson. If you was even considering playing with one of them, don't do it, boy. Leave that junk alone, boy. Let it be a lesson, my dude. Becoming an exorcist. He's become a very quiet person. He does not socialize and mostly just stays in his room. Time has passed, boy, and I do not keep in touch with Charles anymore, but sometimes I wonder how he's doing now. My name is Samira, and this is a haunting story that was passed down from my grandfather to my mother, and now to me. Boy, Years ago, I was about to say, boy, you got a little soft voice, don't you? Years boy, ago, like before Dora. my parents came to Canada, they used to live in a small village in a war-torn country in East Africa. During that time, there was a war that had been happening in the country for the last four decades, and because of that, there were reported hauntings in many places based on the deaths that were happening daily. To give an idea of what might have happened, I come from a long line of exorcists, so there are a lot of instances of family members dealing with the supernatural. Oh, My maternal grandfather was notorious for his experiences, and he did so many exorcisms that half the time he would encounter spirits, almost on a daily basis. In this story, we'll call him Jabbar. One day, Jabbar was riding his bike through the forest, heading to another village to run an errand. Several miles down the road, he encountered a gentleman who was walking down the road. The man halted my Jabbar on his bike, and since he was naturally generous to people, he stopped his bike to see if the man needed any help. The man approached and appeared to be a well-dressed individual. He was wearing a white robe, with honey brown skin and cornrows on his head, not a single speck of dirt from travel. Who this? The man Rocky? asked if he could hitch a ride with Jabbar, and he- That boy looked like, nah, he kinda, he looked like a cartoon version of ASAP. He agreed to give him a lift. The man climbed on the bike with him, and so he continued down the road. Several miles down the road, the man told Jabbar that they were close to his destination, so he stopped the bike and allowed the man to get off. Then the man walked into the bushes and just disappeared. Jabbar was shocked, and he stood there frozen for a good minute before he snapped back to reality. Jabbar continued to his next destination after that. It's been decades since my mother heard that story from my grandfather, and we believe the man was a lost soul who was a casualty in the war. Better start getting full rides. This story is about something I experienced about 20 years ago when I was in my early 20s. At that time, I had broken up with my girlfriend and was going through such miserable days. Oh yeah, I know that feeling, bro. We're going through it, bro. Got the goddamn two of them on the goddamn table. He's staring at pictures. He done took the TV out the room. Yeah. I wanted to focus on something new to forget her. I decided to go hiking, and while looking at the map, I decided to pick a mountain to go to. Among them, I found a mountain whose name was unfamiliar to me, and I chose to go to that one. 
Once I arrived, I started up the mountain path, and it seemed like a normal place. As I was climbing the mountain though, the path ended at some point. However, I was still feeling upset and reluctant to go home. Damn, how far so you So I continued up the mountain and he into make the it forest. To the yet, then at some point, I heard the sound of something moving up ahead of me. I was startled and stopped, thinking it was a wild animal. It sounded like an animal aggressively eating something. I lowered my body to the ground and slowly looked in the direction the sound was coming from. And Bro, there was sure something moving there. there. When I saw it, I almost fainted. It was covered in red fur and I couldn't recognize its face. I I would have said, Clifford, who the, what the hell are you doing out here, Clifford? I could only make <laughs> out its huge nose and mouth, each tooth almost as big as my thumb, and it was eating something. The sound of it chewing down to the bone echoed through oh, the mountains. Gee. Its large hands tore the flesh of the lying beast as if it were tearing paper. The creature's hands were similar to human hands, but its fingers yeah, were eat. long and thick, eat, about yeah. three times as long as a human's. What it was eating was the carcass of a huge animal, like a bear. I felt like vomiting, but I held it back with all my might, thinking that if Please I threw up no right noise. there, it would catch me. I turned around quietly, but the sound of the trees and bushes oh, moving shit. made it look in my direction. It quickly took off a huge chunk of meat that must have weighed about 10 pounds in a single bite and then started to run towards me. When it raised oh, its body, no. it seemed to be at least 8 feet tall, and the sight of its enormous body and appearance took my breath away. Its hey, eyes yeah. were bright yellow, and its pupils were so small that they were almost invisible. It ran on two legs just running, like bro. a person. It ran toward me with its mouth full of meat and at an incredibly fast speed. I thought, I'm going to die right here. I didn't even scream. My legs felt weak, but I ran with all my might. Behind yeah, me, I could me. hear its heavy breathing and footsteps very clearly. I even felt as if the air it was exhaling Man, was touching my back, zip your but bag. I couldn't tell if it was an illusion or real. I ran so fast that my feet felt like they were burning, and after a while, I didn't hear any more sounds from behind me, so I looked back and saw that it had stopped and was looking somewhere else. I saw something like a deer running in the distance, and then it ran toward the deer. I oh thought my God. this I was my chance I to get- I was thankful that the deal came. I was like, oh, bro, better you than me. Better you than me, you feel me. Get away. So I ran as fast as I could down the mountain. I heard a deer crying out and then the sound of bones breaking behind me. But Damn. I kept running without looking back. It seemed like I must have descended the mountain in just 30 minutes, even though it took me three hours to climb to where I was. Mine out there, I girl. think that because of the extreme situation, I was able to push my body beyond its normal limits. When I got back to the base of the mountain, my leg muscles were so sore that I couldn't even press the accelerator in the car. I barely managed to find the local police station and I had told them about the strange creature in the mountain. But the police didn't believe me. They said that people are often eaten by wild animals on the mountain. They said that all the bones and flesh would be gone by the time they found the remains and only skulls were ever found. They said there must be some terrible beast that lives up on the mountain. I pleaded and told them that it wasn't a normal animal, but they simply wouldn't believe me. The thing I saw, it moved its hands like a person, ripped the meat, and ran on two feet. It wasn't an animal or a human. It was something else. I went home and googled it to see if anyone else had reported anything about it, but I couldn't find any information about any creature did, similar. Yeah, buddy. To this day, I still don't know what that creature was or how I managed to get away from it alive. Hey. This happened from December 10th through 11th, 2019. It was my cousin's birthday, December 11th, and was also the same day of our family reunion, which obviously means that all my cousins, uncles, and aunties were there. We celebrated our family reunion in a very rural province in the Philippines. There was a swimming pool there, so we all gathered near it. 
Around 5 p.m., we were swimming and just enjoying ourselves and having fun. We played all types of games, like what normal kids do at a family reunion. Around exactly midnight on December 11th, we sang happy birthday to our cousin Ashley. But as we were singing happy birthday, I noticed something extremely weird. When we were singing happy birthday, we weren't in the water anymore, but all of us were still wearing our bathing suits and wet clothes. While we were singing and enjoying ourselves, I looked away from Ashley and everyone, and I saw Ashley in the far corner of the pool, standing on the water. I rubbed my eyes just to make sure I wasn't seeing an illusion, but she was still there, just staring at me. She wasn't smiling, she just stared. I looked back to Ashley and everyone else surrounding her who was singing happy birthday, and she was there. We finished singing, and everyone was already taking pictures of her with her cake, like nothing had happened. I didn't tell anybody about what I saw until the next morning. I still remember sleeping beside my other cousin, and my other cousin slept beside Ashley. I got woken up by my cousin's alarm, which also means that a few of my cousins also got woken up by it. I noticed that Ashley was still there sleeping, and it was such a relief. I thought something bad would have happened because of what I saw. A few hours had passed, and it was time to head home. I wasn't in the same car as Ashley, since there were a lot of us, and we wouldn't Wait, fit in one car. come on, car. bro. Come on, nah, you can put on a shirt. Nah, buddy. It's the next damn day. It turned out that the car Ashley was riding in got into a car accident. Nobody got hurt except for Ashley, and sadly, she died exactly on her birthday. I felt so sorry for her and distraught Damn. about not knowing that what I saw might have been a warning. I told my cousins and her parents about seeing her oh, doppelganger, he can put on but they shirt. didn't believe me. To this day, I still wonder about what I really saw that night and if her doppelganger had anything to do with her passing. Hi, my name is Ellen. I used to live in this old house that was made entirely of wood. It had two houses combined into one building, and hey. there was a forest just I behind the building. Finish, Many man. scary like things happened either. while I was. Well, they, they gotta finish this. Hey, they gotta finish this bill. This ain't. This don't look safe. Living at that house, and I'm gonna tell you some of them. The first story is about the other house that was connected to ours. My family and I used to have a neighbor, but after a few months, they moved out and there was no one living there. But after they moved out, we started hearing a baby crying at night. And not just the sound of a baby crying, we also heard a grown woman crying and laughing. We looked around and never found any sign of a woman or baby. The second story is about this huge mango tree that was behind our house. It was so close to our house that every time a mango fell from the tree, it would hit our rooftop and make a loud bam sound like someone threw a rock on it. But years later, my dad decided to chop the tree down for our safety, because when there were bad storms, we were afraid that the tree would fall down and hit our house. After my dad chopped down the tree, I thought that the sound of the mangoes falling on the house would go away, but sometimes I would still hear the same loud thud on our rooftop. The oh, third story is about my mom. Night, my mom look, knows how to bake cakes. Sometimes around. people will order a cake from her. She would usually bake cakes at night because during the day, she was busy with her work. She told me that every night she would bake cakes, she would hear the sound of someone running across her rooftop. The fourth yeah. story is about my little sister, who is now eight years old. We used to have a babysitter, and my little sister really loved her. She would follow her around everywhere, even to the bathroom. But there was one time when Wait. she followed the babysitter to the bathroom, but then she came the running bathroom. to me and my siblings, since my parents weren't home. We asked her why she was crying, and she said that the babysitter had a scary face. After my little sister said that, all of us ran to our parents' room, bringing her with us. We did that because we knew that our babysitter was actually cleaning our parents' room the whole time and never went to the bathroom. Oh, Many shit. other scary things have happened, but it's hard to remember all of them. We have already moved out of that house, but I still wonder if all these incidents were connected. Why was it making those sounds and scaring my sister? Is it still out there somewhere? I said on top of the thing, roof making beats. Hey. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you put in the comment section below if you got some dope videos or any requests of what you want to see your boy react to next. Stay tuned. Mohi coming soon. And I'm out.